Mr. Chairman. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Good morning to everybody. Dr. Akihiko Tanaka, President of JICA, the Honorable Mr. Kazumi Matsui, Mayor of Hiroshima City, Your Excellency Al Haj Murad Ibrahim, Chair of the MILF, Your Excellency Secretary Teresita Quintos Dallas, the uh, Presidential Advisor of the Office of the Presidential, Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, Government of the Philippines, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. First, my apologies. I'm still suffering from a bit of a cold, so my voice will sound rather sexy this morning. I hope you can follow. Uh, on behalf of the Research and Education for Peace University Science Malaysia, uh, we would like to welcome all the distinguished guests and participants to this program. Uh, we've been doing this program since 2006, and I'm happy to note that the enthusiasm of both the participants and our partners to continue this program is still very high. Uh, we must be doing something right you know, for a change. Uh, we really feel that this is due to the effectiveness of this program in contributing to the strengthening of the Foundation for Peace in Mindanao. Building peace takes a lot of hard work and contributions of all parties and stakeholders are very important. Lessons learned from other cases and conflict areas provide the impetus for change in the mindsets of participants. And having space to be able to discuss the issues openly and honestly also helps towards fostering greater understanding and confidence. Ties need to be created and links formed between those that work for peace. Consultations between parties of all levels and groups also need to be fostered and encouraged. To this end, we feel that the COP programs have helped by becoming a platform towards addressing these concerns and strengthening the foundation for peace in Mindanao. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the sixth COP program that we have been co-organizing with JICA since 2006. It's been quite a long journey. You know, watching that video just now was like walking down memory lane. You know, we see a lot of photos from the previous COPs. I remember that you know, my hair used to be very short when we started the COP program. Now it's very long. I don't know why. Uh, I used to also weigh maybe 20 kilograms lighter you know, than, than before. Last night when I went to pick up my, my T-shirt, the official T-shirt, I was surprised that my size is now double XL. And it used to be M in the first COP. So whatever it is, we must have served very good food during our programs. <laughs> the first COP, or the uh, Penang Peace Seminar, as it was you know, called, and, and I see also a lot of, uh, I see also many, many uh, alumni you know, from our previous COPs. So, so you, you would know what I'll be telling uh, about. Uh, the first COP was organized from 23rd to 26th January 2006. And this COP brought together 15 participants each from the Philippines and also from Aceh with a few uh, observers, you know, observers from Southern Thailand. Because Southern Thailand was not really you know, part of the COP program, but we felt that it was necessary for those people, those friends who are working for peace in Southern Thailand, to be able to learn you know, from the processes that, uh, you know, we, that we are doing both in Southern Philippines and also in Aceh. So it was a three-way uh, COP, the first uh, COP. And the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the participants from the, South, from the Mindanao Peace Program then look at the Aceh uh, you know, participants because they were the ones that, that were more advanced because they already signed an MOU in 2005. And then the Southern Thailand or the Patani observers then look at both the Mindanao participants and the Achenese participants. So it was a three-way learning process. The second COP uh, was in 2007. Uh, with the theme of building sustainable peace in Aceh, Mindanao, and Southern Thailand, and was held between 2nd and 6th September 2007. And, and this, car, this time around, you know, we, we decided to upgrade the participants from Southern Thailand to not only become observers, but also to participate, because they also have lots of questions and comments that can help the peace processes both in Aceh and Mindanao. And uh, the third one was COP in 
2009, COP3 for Mindanao, saving and moving forward the Mindanao peace process. And for this COP, we actually decided to concentrate just on Mindanao. Uh, situation in Mindanao was not so good at that particular time because of the collapse of the peace process in the aftermath of the non-signing of the MOA AD in August 2008. And this prompted, prompted us just to focus on Mindanao with the theme of saving and moving forward the Mindanao peace process. And this was actually the biggest gathering of the stakeholders from the Mindanao conflict until that time. And uh, we were able to, you know, to bring to Penang uh, more than 50 participants represent, repre representing all the major parties and stakeholders. And if you want to have uh, uh, you know, a view of that COP, I think we have a video playing outside you know, at the booth uh, showing uh, how you know, some of our participants were debating and arguing with each other. But do not worry, none of the debates uh, be, uh, became violent, almost, but not violent. Uh, and then as a follow-up of the COP3, we also organized what was called the Mindanao Educators Peace Summit. Transforming the conflict in Mindanao through sustainable peace and quality higher education in January 2010. And this was not a COP. This was a program that came out of a COP uh, which brought together 30 college and universities presidents from Mindanao in the hope that they can be persuaded you know, to promote peace education and to promote universities as vehicles and hubs of peace uh, in Mindanao. I remember the keynote speaker at that time was the then secretary of OPAP, the late Dr. Annabel Abaya. She gave a keynote speech, and, and it was a very good uh, program, resulting in also an MOU between our university, University of Science Malaysia, and the MASCUF, which, is, uh, which, which stands for the uh, uh, Mindanao Association of State and Colleges Universities Federation. And, and from that program also, USM then uh, gave scholarships to the Bangsa Moro students studying PhDs and masters at USM. So that was the you know, part of the success of that uh, Mindanao Educators Peace Summit. Then in 2011, we had the COP4. And this COP4, actually, we, we went back to the earlier formula of inviting also participants from Aceh and, and also Southern Thailand, given that uh, there was a time that we need, you know, we needed to support again the processes in these two areas because they were, they were going through some rough uh, patches and, you know, the participants from Mindanao then became resource persons that helped out the participants from these two other areas. In January 16 to 20th, 2005, 2012, sorry, we discussed, uh, we organized the COP5. And this was to follow up the momentum of the meeting between President Benigno Aquino III and Chair Ibrahim Murad in Tokyo in August 2011. Uh, and, and also to follow up the many activities organized by many civil society organizations in Mindanao. And we agree with the recommendations of the civil society groups and decided to follow up the process of supporting and deepening the proposed initiatives given by the civil society. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also noteworthy to mention some other contributions of the COP5. Uh, a number of the participants from the COP5 had become officially involved in the succeeding peace talks either as consultants and observers. The staff from the House of Senate and Congress have also become more involved in informing their institutions and linking up with the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process and the Government Peace Panels in regards to this peace process. Similarly, the MILF Peace Panel continued to reach out to the local politicians and other stakeholders who participated in the COP. In peace building tracks such as COP, it is clear that there is an enormity of the many challenges of the peace process and that this cannot be left as a sole burden of the government and the MILF. It is on this respect that peace building initiatives such as the COP presents a unique vehicle in which the very idea of peace building among local and external stakeholders can be consolidated but most importantly, in which the local stakeholders develop a deep sense of ownership of the whole peace-building process itself. 
The COP program is a track to of the formal peace process, bringing together the main actors, civil society groups, and external actors in a mission and vision towards sustainable peace in Mindanao. Ladies and gentlemen, in planning for the COP6, the partners continue to work on the success of previous COPs and to use this as a platform for constructive dialogue for all the parties and stakeholders. This COP6 is also intended to generate ideas and to continue the work for peace during this important transition stage in the search, in the search for peace in Mindanao. We have decided to focus on the following themes for the implementation of peace in Mindanao, which are the Bangsamoro socio-economic development, the institutionalization of the Bangsamoro government, the developments of normalization. And we hope to have meaningful discussions as these three topics can contribute to the efforts of making sure that peace will finally be achieved in Mindanao. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like again to acknowledge and to thank our partners uh, for the last few years, uh, JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, who have been very generous in their support for the COP programs and other activities, and they have been patient listening you know, to, our, uh, to our advice and to our comments on how to go about doing peace building uh, in Mindanao. I remember many years ago when I first came you know, for a meeting with JICA, I went to see Madam Ogata, and I was struck uh, by the enthusiasm that was shown by Madam Ogata, the then president of JICA, and the JICA officials uh, in, in transforming JICA itself, you know, from just concentrating on ODA to also contributing you know, actively and uh, proactively you know, in peace building efforts in uh, not only Mindanao but also in other parts of Southeast Asia and the world. And for that, we have to congratulate JICA and thank you, JICA, for you know, continuing supporting this COP program. But most of all, I would like to thank all of you, participants of the COP6, alumni of previous COPs, you know, for continuing to be participants of our program, to give ideas, uh, to debate on these ideas, uh, to debate non-violently on these ideas. You know, we also thank you for that as well. And, and we are all on our journey you know, for peace in Mindanao. It's, it's still quite a way to go uh, in this transition stage, and we hope to find uh, the journey to be not so eventful, you know, not so colorful, you know, if possible, but to finally achieve all the goals and objectives, you know, that we want to achieve at the end of this journey. I'm not sure if this, this, this is the last COP6 or not. I hope this will continue because we still need to keep on monitoring the situation and to keep on supporting the peace process in Mindanao. And even when we have a Bangsamoro government, I feel that we still need to support you know, peace building process in the post, uh, you know, post agreement and post conflict situation. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that we all have a good meeting this next few days. Enjoy your meeting. And again, thank you all for coming here. Thank you. <laughs>